Good afternoon, mask fans and addicts. You're here in the Mask Fan Attic. Once again, thanks for coming. Uh, help yourself to the complimentary insects. We got, we got uh, bees, we got wasps, we got uh, ants, fleas, termites, um, whatever you need, really. Spiders aren't really insects, but uh, oh, what the heck. Uh, live a little. Help yourself to the spiders, too. Anyway, uh, today's mask here in the Mask Fan Attic goes all the way back, way back, to 1982, when the movie Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, came out. Now, even though it was called Halloween 3, uh, most people know by now, but we didn't really know this at the time, uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween 1 or 2. It just takes place on Halloween. And, uh, that's one of the reasons people were so disappointed with it. Uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, instead of being about Michael Myers, it has nothing to do with any of that. It's about uh, a mask factory. Actually, uh, Don Post Studios was actually used as a shooting location. A mask factory that makes evil masks which have computer chips in them which um, will turn the wearers of the masks heads into piles of live snakes and insects. It's true. I, you can't make this stuff up. I didn't write it, okay? It's a plot that the makers of the Adam West Batman TV series would have turned it down for not being believable enough, but it did result in some cool, iconic Halloween masks. Now, uh, the script involved three masks, a, a skull and a witch and a pumpkin, and the witch and the skull uh, were uh, simply Don Post masks that already existed, and they just used them uh, for the movie, but they had a, a new one sculpted for the pumpkin because Don Post Studios wasn't making any pumpkin masks at the time. And that pumpkin was uh, a lot like this one. Okay, a lot like it. Now, when it came out in time for the 1983 Halloween season, it was actually called Pumpkin Head. Not like Pumpkin Head, the monster uh, character who came along later, who spells his name with all one word. Uh, pumpkin Head was generally two words. Although sometimes just called pumpkin, sometimes called H3 pumpkin. Now, uh, the mask, of course, is long gone. It wasn't out for very long. This was a million years ago. This, which I hold in my hand here, is in fact a reissue, which came along in the year 2012, making it one of the last things of interest to come from Don Post Studios, the historic mask making uh, company, Don Post Studios, one of the last things to come for them before they close their doors uh, good and proper in the fall of 2012. Uh, now th this was a re-release which of course was of great interest to collectors. Uh, a lot of people were excited about these and couldn't wait to see this. Okay now you may be thinking if, uh, if you've seen this mask before, the 2012 reissue, you may be thinking how come the one Dr. Lady has in that uh, video in his attic looks pretty good and the one I have uh, looks like a wad of bright orange gum that would be stuck to the bottom of my shoe as I exit a subway station on the western side of New York City. Well, uh, by this time Don Post wasn't even putting these masks in bags. They weren't even in plastic bags. They were just throwing them in the boxes and crushing them and smashing them down. Uh, kind of like the tall man does to corpses, just crushing them, you know. And so a lot of these, when they arrived at their new homes, they didn't look like much. They were all crushed and flattened out. Now, if you have one like that, uh, here's what you can do is complain. Go on the internet and complain. And if you're a smart person and you don't want to do that, here's a better idea. Uh, you can, if you want to keep the tag on, if you don't want to keep the tag on, take the tag off. Hey, if you want to keep the tag, which has a Halloween 3 logo on it and then the little cardboard silver shamrock logo and on the back of that it looks it's printed to look like a computer chip which is pretty cool I think okay you like that I thought that was impressive I think it's cool they went that extra little distance to make this a little more of a movie uh, tie-in product especially so many years after the movie come on uh, a better thing to do than complain about it being squished out of shape is what I did which is, I, I had a little tiny uh, Ziploc bag. I don't remember what came in it. Yes, I do, in fact. We'll fix that in post. Post, get it? Fix it in post? Yeah. Uh, it, it, had, it had airbrush uh, uh, tips in it, little metal airbrush tips, and it was a little plastic bag. But just use a regular Ziploc bag, okay? And, and put the tag in there, 
sealed little Ziploc bag or you know not necessarily Ziploc brand I mean this is not a product endorsement you know just one of those bags where you squeeze the plastic thing at the top of the bag and it's it's tight do that take the mask and throw it in the clothes dryer no kidding throw it in the dryer for about 10 minutes uh, you may want to put it inside a pillowcase and then tie the pillowcase shut or uh, put a uh, bit of string or something around it to hold it shut, a couple of clothespins, whatever, just to sort of protect the paint. That's what I did with these, these masks. And I, and I got a few of these pumpkins, and they all looked squished out of shape and hopeless and terrible when I got them, but I found that throwing them in the dryer for about 10 minutes uh, caused the uh, vinyl, this is vinyl, not latex, don't do that with latex masks. Do it with vinyl masks, kids. There's a tip for you, too. Uh, I, doing that made the vinyl relax enough to where you could get it to assume its normal shape. And then I just stuffed it with paper. So, uh, actually not paper. Technically, it's plastic because it's these plastic grocery bags from, from my local uh, Kroger's, I believe. And that's not a product endorsement either. Although, although I, uh, Kroger's is fine. I like Kroger's, yeah. Like Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Kroger, sure, I like him. But anyway, now people ask how many of these came along, uh, how many were produced, because again, this was right when Don Post was being shut down. I've heard uh, estimates, uh, nobody seems to agree, I've heard estimates anywhere from six, well I know there were more than that, because I've seen more than that. Uh, there were anywhere from six to, uh, you know, I, heard, I heard 24, I heard 30. Uh, I think, now nobody knows for sure, I guess, maybe somebody will will produce positive proof, but I kind of doubt it at this late stage of the game. The best estimate I heard was that there were 72 of them, because that would be uh, six dozen. Do the math. So that makes sense to me, that there may have been 72 of these made as uh, product samples. But the thing is, it was never officially released, because Don Post Studios was not around to release it. And the uh, rights to this mask and the skull and the witch were later picked up in 2014 by Trick or Treat Studios, who did their own version of these characters. Now, uh, the Don Post one here, people complained about it a lot, and rightly so. There are some flaws in it, but it's still a pretty darn cool little mask, I think. For one thing, uh, I like the fact that it's fluorescent, okay? Now, um, what that means is that it glows under black light. Let's just see, shall we? Let's see how it looks under black light. I, I have a black light here, and I'm going to turn off the overhead light and turn on the black light so that you can see how it looks uh, glowing in the dark under fluorescent lighting. Coming up immediately after this cheesy 1980s style scene transition. And we're back! Did you enjoy the transition? I thought so. Anyway, uh, now I have a black light here, as you can probably tell, and we're going to see what the pumpkin looks like. Again, this is the 2012 Rare Limited Number Don Post Studios uh, Halloween 3 Pumpkin from 2012. And come on, you got to love that. How can you not love that? That's just a cool thing. Now, one way to uh, tell the difference between this and some of the other versions of uh, this character, including the trick-or-treat one that came along a couple of years later. This one had a fluorescent stem. As you can probably tell, uh, not only does the pumpkin itself glow orange, the stem glows green under black light. Not in total darkness because that would be phosphorescent. These only glow under black light, which is fluorescent. Make a note of that. And by the way, the 1983 Don Post catalog, which introduced these masks, managed to misspell the words fluorescent and ghoulish in the same paragraph promoting the masks. Now, if anything looks a little misshapen here, that could partly be my fault because I have a lot of stuffing in there, okay? And, um, so, you know, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, it looks too wide or something like that, that could be my fault because I just got a lot of stuffing because I wanted it to look nice and round and, again, I wanted it to stay in a nice pumpkin-like shape rather than the crushed, flattened, mangled uh, pancake shape that, uh, in, which, in which it comes. But that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, look for these. They're, they're still uh, around here and there in collector circles. And now that the trick-or-treat version came along, this one has been dubbed sort of obsolete by a lot of people. But 
I think it's still cool because again it has the uh, glow in the dark or glow in the fluorescent light rather glow under black light and be careful there I'll get sued if I say glow in the dark and somebody buys one and says mine isn't glow in the dark it only glows under black light you know how that works uh, the the uh, black light reactive or neon as some people call it stem and it does have black mesh fabric uh, in the openings it has black mesh in there so that if you do wear it uh, nobody can see your eyes and there were some flaws in some of these uh, largely because of the previously mentioned problem of uh, posts uh, shipping department not putting the masks in individual bags you had things like paint being cracked and chipped and scuffed up so some of them need a little TLC uh, I got hold of several of them and had to repair some of the black uh, the black paint on there but um, yeah it has its flaws but I think it's still a cool mask and you know at the end of the day you can't get any more Halloweeny looking than a glowing pumpkin can you so I recommend it uh, even though it's kind of one of the lost artifacts of the old days of mask collecting. And I'll see you up again, up here in the attic again next time, where it's Halloween every day.